Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> All right, so we got Jonah, Darren, and uh, Dar Darren Espanto and Lani Misalucha singing together at the Aches, the Aces, in, in in like a few years ago. Um, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, there's such a mixture of vocal tonalities here. And I like Lani a lot, Miss Alucha. Yeah, and I like Jonah, and I think Darren is absolutely brilliant. So, what are we gonna watch? I have no idea. This Let's is crazy. Up. This is the magic flute. Right. This is an opera piece, though. Oh god. So I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> you know? So Let's give it away. I have no idea what to expect. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We weren't even using the microphone. <laughs> I don't know if you haven't heard half of the things we just said. That's a good set. But this is from the Fountain of the Opera. Is it? No. I don't know. Is it? I've never seen it. My brain is betraying my... my... me all. There it is. Yeah, this is from the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, you know it. Oh. That's awesome, right? It's very versatile. Very peculiar that someone like a, you, you know, you should. God, I thought he was a child. I forget that ch children grow. <laughs> Yeah. I literally did. What a voice! That's actually also what I said to myself in the mirror sometimes. Wow, well, I thought I was a kid still. Wow. But I have to pay tax. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gone! Yeah, subscribe now! <laughs> Sound technique. It's beautiful, beautiful technique. Gorgeous stuff. Because you, you know, you know, <laughs> like, you know what? like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hermano, what the hell? Listen, listen. That is so hard. <laughs> Why he just did. That has that in here? What the fuck? Actually, he has it in here. But right. yeah, really good. Well, it was air though, isn't it? It must be in his diaphragm. Sure. If, if you want to go with that thought. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's alveola in his lungs. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes, yeah, sure. Wow, very technical. Gaseous exchange. Okay. Wow, wow. Yes, sir. Fantastic. <laughs> Biology class from year nine is paying off. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I think this is just madness. Because even even though like he had to like reach a little further to hit those notes and maybe maintain them, right. uh, the fact that his larynx are capable of such, you know, flexibility, it's mm. already crazy. I don't really understand how people have those type of capabilities. Yeah, actually, I think it's really hard because thinking from uh, the the technique point uh, point of view, he was really grounded, very uh, down and resonant throughout the whole of uh, the piece up to that break, which, you know, which doesn't allow the larynx to uh, go into that, soprano like uh 
setting is is very difficult even though he was already tilting the larynx to create that openness that bigness that we were listening to right and i think if he would have found a more a, a more of a like a relaxation on the tip of the tongue creating that like sort of like slide effect with his tongue in that falsetto range well not falsetto but like higher range of of uh in that break mm -hmm. he could have probably maintain the lo the notes a little longer right uh but it is a force of habit especially when you're going when your larynx are retracting so far back and so high um the muscles that are attached to it all also want to retract 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 and go back and also go high but also uh creates some necessary tension on the lower part of of the jaw here because your tongue is attached right underneath it, right here, right? So if you, your your larynx is going up, it's gonna pull that muscle with it too, right? right. So if you swallow, Just and, it. yeah, with your finger right underneath the roots of the tongue, you can feel how it retracts and contracts with the movement of the larynx because it's all attached, right? So what is really difficult is trying to tell your tongue to stick the tip of the tongue to the bottom of your teeth and create that higher uh, rise on the tongue the in the slide. back. So the soft palate lifts and the larynx has a lot of more space to go t back towards and it has that uh, like um, resonance box effect that you're looking for. So Branners are very good at it. Right. <laughs> Look at how little her jaw is moving. But look how open is up back here. Did you see that right here? She's got like a concave uh, uh, feature in her face. Like it's like kind of like opening here. But it's very tight right in, around the lips. So it's creating that really big... Uh, uh, sound box effect like the guitar like you know how it's hollow it's sure. creating that effect ah. right in between the mouth without using too much of the uh, facial muscles so it's all happening inside the mouth right. so you can really see it you can really see it here okay go on you see that you see how it's all happening back here you see all bad. here soprano and uh um mid so you you got two sets of, of of ranges being displayed there obviously modulation is different when you're at the top you require different things like if you are a top soprano you're required to do modulate in a different way uh to maintain the roundness 
and the, and the softness of of the of the note itself without losing clarity right. and in the uh, mezzo here uh that's lani uh you need to uh, maintain warmth throughout uh, throughout the, the the whole of the movement by the way if you're thinking about the music sheet and what each each of them each individual is doing in the movements it is so very intricate so the thought process behind uh, the reason why they don't see, look at each other much is because for them individually their lines are their tune so they don't depend on the next person to know where they're going. Like okay. usually how you uh, uh, um, you see it in normal pop music when you get uh, harmonies that mm -hmm. work in similar ways. You need to look at each other to try and find where is it that you're going. But in pieces that are so complicated and move in such specific ways, uh, the thought process is my line is the tune, is the only tune. Okay. Therefore, I cannot be swung and, and shaken by by the other part that is going through it, which is doing something uh, on a different time signature with a different melody. So it's like doing two things at the same time that are completely uh, juxtaposed. And it gives this really uh, fantastic fullness and dynamic harmony that's very intricate to listen to. So the thought process is my line, my tune. That's how they don't get lost. Kind of thing. And that's how they don't get lost. Right. Obviously, on top of a lot, a lot of practice. Sure, sure. Because it's, it's, it's a very difficult piece. Yeah. Right. And they were, maybe they were, so you're saying then, like, the eye contact that was going on there, it's just more, I don't know, more theatrical. Rather than Absolutely. It's more about acknowledging each other rather than uh, trying Music. to find each other in, musically, if that makes sure. sense, you know? Okay. That was freaking impressive. <laughs> So it's like a mix between modern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what they call the neoclassical. Right, right. Yeah, it's bang on neoclassical. Mm, yeah. yeah. But it's, 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 an, it's that fella then. I mean, Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's the so revolutionary. Is it, is it right, right. Yeah, see, he see. introduced the rhythmicality to classical and lyrical. He's well, like less accessible, put, right? some rhythm to this. Well, it makes it more accessible. Yeah, it makes it hella more dramatic, too. It's like the tension. It's like peak 90s behavior <laughs> with, like, absolute perfection of Mozart. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's like, yeah, was that the, he's the genius behind that. Right, see, yeah. see. Whoa, what? Thanks, bro. Look, pay attention to this! Look at her tongue! I can't. Now I can. See how 
how she had to like physically try to reach down so her larynx could pull back because when you pull back like i said earlier everything pulls back with it so try and and that that little moment of shift that when she actually physically had to push her tongue out it's it's level a1 top technique when it comes to cl classical training obviously you wouldn't see that in an opera singer like purely opera sure. uh but that's fantastic technique like physically displayed in in a way that anyone could understand that's very you know cool. yeah <laughs>
And now you just want to be an opera singer. Let's go. <laughs> that is madness. You're like so like peculiar. That's how you blow somebody's a- brains away in a 10 minute piece. Yeah, they look like a proper theater as well. Like, Damn. It was awesome. That I would, I, you know, I, I've never been to an opera, like a display like that, or like an opera, what do you call it, performance. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. And I, and I never really had the interest of it. Okay. I it always should... sounded cool. And it does kind of suit my vibe. I like, I like that, the, the places and all that, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I like, you know, in tuxedos and, and the... Like, yeah. The the going there with company and the whole is so classic and it's mm-hmm. awesome. I like that sort of theme, but uh, yeah, I've never I've never actually thought about like oh let me book some tickets to go watch like a local the opera. Singer. Yeah, yeah, the opera, right? Because you feel I don't know. Oh, it's very off. It's very common here in London too. It's so like now, oh, I just spend the weekend going after, to the opera. After watching that, I think I might give it a go. Like I'm, yes, I, I want to book it. Not we can't at the moment because it's still like indoor events are not allowed. Yeah. And I, and I don't think outdoors it would shine the same. No, definitely. A theatre acoustics is so, so beneficial when it comes to it. Although, this was on an open air. Uh, really? Yeah, this was an open air um, stage. Uh, this this wasn't on, on, a, on a small, like, theatre. Yeah. No, it, it was. I, I, saw, I saw it at the beginning. Look. There is no ceiling. No ceiling, wow. Yeah, it's just just uh just the staging they they put up, kind of crazy. Well, Anyways. fair enough. Well, let us know, because a lot of yeah. you guys sent this through, uh, and I and I think the person who sent it through, well, someone that sent it through because it's quite a bit, said that they were there live. Yeah. They were there in the moment. Oh wow. They were there, yeah. So I'd love to know if that was you. If you're watching this, that'd be awesome. I'm always like to watch it live. Tell us the experience of it. Like, if you, if you saw, if you had the opportunity to see this live, what did it feel like to to have all those resonant notes coming through the whole of your body? Bizarre. That must have been crazy. Anyways. Ah, fantastic. Well, uh, let us know what your thoughts about it and what other video we should check out next. Yes. Um, and also, do remember, you can now purchase your merchandise to support the podcast and, and uh, reactions like this and also to look stylish as hell. In the link in the description below or go to futurefridaystore.com. Let's go.